This chapel in the Tower of London is in one of the oldest parts of the structure. It's a great subject, I think, for a fairly brisk line drawing and then using sketch markers to really have a go at capturing the feel of the light and the, the shape, the structure, the curve, the arches of this building. So you're watching this real time. The actual line work takes me nine minutes to do and then there's another eight minutes of real time applying the sketch marker. Although for the sketch marker, I did delete some of the periods where I was choosing a pen or finding a pen that had ink or putting caps on pens and finding the one that I wanted. So this is a freehand pen drawing. So there's no, no pencil. So I'm having to be a little bit cautious and learn to observe carefully and to reference off what I started with. So I started with this center lower arch and then I move across from left to right drawing the adjacent arches seeking to get the angle correct and the curvature therefore correct and then the perspective angles correct as well. So the tops of these arches form a shallow u-shape themselves and then above that there is a a baseline where the upper arches sit, which is a slightly higher, steeper, fuller curve, mm. according to the, the principles of perspective, where curves become rounder as they move above eye level. They become fuller. Now, I don't need to worry too much about the line work in the sense of because the mark is going to be applied on top, particularly because it's going to be relatively dark, this, this line work is really a framework. Now that's not to say that, that we need to make careful choices about what we put where, and we certainly should try and get it correct on the first go. But we're not trying to so much create effects, the visual effect of this, as to define the structure that we want to put the values on. It's a relatively simple form in that there's not much decoration really just the capitals, and then there's just a little bit of detail at the base where we have the, the, the seats and a little bit of the, the furniture of the, of the chapel down the front. But otherwise, it's, it's basically all about these quite sweeping perspective angles and this repeated arch motive with light coming through the window in different ways and reflecting off the arch sides in different ways depending on which side of the chapel we're on. At this point though, we're just seeking to do the framework though that will contain all of this. Now it's important that we, I think in a scene such as this, try and add the ground level context. Often the detail at ground level in this sort of scene can feel complicated, can feel a bit too hard and it can be tempting to leave it out to either not take the drawing past where it starts or to in effect here draw a bare room but I do feel that particularly these these seats and the the darker horizontal banding it gives us at the base is a wonderful visual platform for the columns and the arches moving up through the light and then framed at the top with the the dark the dark um, hemisphere of the roof. But again, particularly with the detail down the front with the, the seats, it's important not to do anything more than to really define where they're going to be because the actual visual impact will come from the values, from the darknesses of the various pens that we'll use, the sketch markers that we'll use. So now I'm doing the, the last of the capitals on this side. One, one good tip for this sort of scene is learn to, learn to pay particular attention to where the corners of the, the caps that sit on the top of the capitals are. Because as the columns curve towards us, the, 
the positioning of the corner that's closest to us relative to where it is over the actual shaft of the column changes. And if we're not careful, we'll just draw them all the same. Or we won't draw them showing the full shift visually of where that corner is over, over the column. And yet it's an important part of drawing something that looks right. These last two capitals that I'm doing the, the capitals now, I didn't draw those, those top pieces of stone at the right angle when I was just positioning lines under the arches because I didn't pay enough attention. I presumed that it was going to be the same as the columns I'd already drawn when in fact it wasn't. So we're never too experienced to suffer the pitfalls of making presumptions rather than careful observation. However, fortunately, I will be able to disguise those sections with some very dark value to put over the top because that is an area of dark shadow in both cases. So no need to worry about that mistake. It will all come out in the wash, so to speak. And again, we need to be paying attention to the relative thicknesses of the, the, the um, sections between the arches, the, the bits of wall that hold up the arch, because they do change shape as they move towards us. They get thinner and thinner. And we need to reflect that, because that's partly how we're going to read the curvature is by the space between the columns, between the arches, changing. Now, there's a lot of form above these windows, but we're going to be representing that in the value. Now, when we apply value, the direction that we apply it in can be really important. And I find that with applying marker, tone that um, my thinking is the same as with hatching and cross hatching that I want to try and reflect the underlying form with the direction of my lines of my marks particularly because with marker it's there's often an inherent unevenness in the ink application and therefore we can make out something of of the individual strokes. So we want the direction to be a helpful one that actually gives credibility to the underlying form that we know structurally is there. And so now again, this really is just a, a framework that I can use to confidently put some sketch marker lines in or applications of value in. And let's not forget the shadows across the floor. They're really important. Ground level shadows are often overlooked in drawings and yet they, they do so much to create a sense of reality and I think often give a very satisfactory grounding to our scene. So we're just about done. Just checking to see is there anything I've missed? Do I have every line that I need to help me position the value? And I think this is pretty much it. This is pretty much it. Just now the leading on these two windows. And now we get to create the effect of the light. We get to draw the light. Now, of course, we can't really draw the light. What we really do is we draw the shadow. And in the spots where we don't put the shadow, magically the light appears. So I'm using Copic sketch markers. I'm using their neutral gray color. And I'm using uh, from one to five. So I've got five gradations here. Now, this took me eight minutes, nine minutes to do in real time. As I said, it's, it's a little bit faster here because I took out a couple of minutes where I was putting caps on and taking caps off and wondering, is this the right pen or will I go lighter or darker? So you see me here now trying to get the form of the roof with my marks here. I find 
Generally, if I'm not sure of what marker to use, it's best to go light because we can always come over the top with a darker one. Once that ink's on the paper, there ain't no taking it off. But if I am confident, and this really comes through experience, particularly with using the same type of markers all the time, we get to judge how the different values work and look, and we can predict that before we put them on the paper. I think it's very helpful to go as dark as we can because otherwise we're continually going over darker, going over darker, going over darker, which is both time consuming, does use a lot more ink, and in some ways can take away the freshness of the line work. It, it can start, our, our, our drawing, our scene can start to look a bit overworked. And particularly if we're trying to capture a light effect, sometimes a lightish, lightish touch is what we need. So I used N5 and then an N4. I've gone back to the N5 now. Decided that the N4 was a bit prematurely light. So more N5. I will use an N6 just for the chairs at the base and the lectern and the uh, baptism font as well. But except for that, N5 is as dark as I'm going to go here. So now I've uh, switched to an N4 again, I think. So I'm trying to visualize my color photo as if it were a black and white one. And if we're not confident, and if we're not confident about doing that, a very helpful thing if we have a digital copy of the photo is to desaturate it just to slide the color to zero and see how it looks in black and white. I don't think this is a particularly difficult scene to do that with in our mind, but sometimes the actual color can be quite misleading as to the value, as to the actual darkness. Sometimes some very strong looking colors can actually have quite light values and it can be easily misjudged if that's the case. I just realized I'd, I'd missed a couple of lines here. So I just switched back to my multi-liner. Used a 0 0.1 for the line work because I wanted the values to create the shapes rather than the lines. I didn't want the outline to be particularly noticeable at the end. This was all about the light effects. Now I know that I'm going to want to be leaving the windows white, as in the paper white, and they're going to be the brightest spots. Every other part of this is going to have at least an N1 of value applied so that the actual light through the windows is quite clearly the brightest, lightest section. So I'm using an N1 now, just really covering virtually everything that I haven't done so far knowing that I can then now come over the top of this with an N2 or an N3 and make it a little bit darker. When we get to this stage, there's a lot of back and forth with our pens, I think, or a little more line work needed. There's a lot of back and forth with our pen work, with our sketch marker, because we, we understand we read values in relation to other values around them. And so our darks look dark because of because of the light that's there and the proximity to the light. And the light can look light because of the darks that are around it. And so once we start to cover the whole scene, we often become aware of adjustments that we can make. We can make this a bit darker, this a bit darker. Now, we obviously can't make things lighter. So at this stage, we're perhaps going a little bit more cautiously than at the start when all of the obviously dark bits were put in place fairly fairly early and now I've got the N6 and I'm doing these these pews no, seats I think they're actually chairs not not pews if you don't have much experience with markers though I would recommend you try and do this using say three values say an N1 and N3 and an N5 and just have three values to play with will make it easier, I think, to just get your head around what's happening and the effects. 
in the same way when we start painting we should we should work on using as few colors as we can and that way we really get to understand how colors work how they look we can really learn about mixing colors because there are less possibilities for us to ha have to get our head around once we truly understand how to use six or ten colors really well we could add another ten and the principles are all the same and it's quite straightforward but if we start with 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 20 colors we're probably going to be overwhelmed and the lack of consistency in what's happening from the different tubes of paint will probably make it harder for us to actually learn the skills that we need i think it's the same with values buying every second value is a better way to go so I'm starting now to, to pay more attention to some of the more, more subtle areas and also the actual areas around the windows where the lighting is more important because I very much want the sense that the light's coming from the end and it's bouncing around at the far end but it's, it's darker. We're more in shadows as it comes towards us. But we're getting fairly close towards the end and look if you're finding this interesting please hit the like button that's a way that you can help me out if this is helping you out why not do that right now while you keep watching and if you find particularly these real-time videos helpful then please let me know in the comments it, it can be tricky because if the videos are too long then they really don't get watched that much but I thought this was a fairly fast topic to do, a fairly fast subject to get quite an effective finish. Less than 20 minutes from start to finish, I think, is a nice quick sketch. This could have been a, an ideal technique and subject for an on-location sketch. I did actually sit in this place in 2006 and do a very quick pencil sketch, one of the very first urban sketches, location sketches that I ever did. And I think that's that's it. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Look, I hope you found this interesting. I will post this photo on my channel community page if you'd like to have a go. And whether you just draw it with line and do hatching or whether you use values and, and use sketch markers or even colour, totally up to you. But look, however you do it, wherever it takes you, However it turns out, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.